Okay. Welcome to episode one of the Drunken Arcanauts Die Carn campaign. I'm Clancy, and I am your DM. This is a fifth edition D&D campaign that is a podcast and live stream and video and role play session. Um, less ERP than we used to do. Real bummer. But, you know, uh, maybe we can get back to it. It's a new campaign, a new world, and who knows the way that they'll be solving problems here. I sure don't. Um, so I'm going to introduce to uh, our listeners and remind our players the world that they are in. The fantastic world of Daikarn. Uh, Daikarn is made up of roughly five major countries on two different continents. Um, Sacrilli, Lumbura, Thoracis, Cerveca, and Cusix. Um, these countries have been in more or less the same sort of uh, balance of power for thousands of years now. And they are all bordered to the south by uh, a line of volcanoes that are ever erupting and are highly dangerous. Uh, these mountains block off any exploration further south, and it's known as the World Spine. There is also a giant magical gate in the World Spine. Um, the Gate of the World Spine, known by a very, very large religious group also as the Gate to Heaven, um, it's a sort of holy site, but it hasn't done much other than keep people from walking through the deadly volcano line. People who have tried to cross the volcanoes have never come back. It's assumed that they all die because it's volcanoes and magma, and it's kind of just a not friendly place to go. Um, the world has trains, just a little bit of technology, more than a typical D&D sort of scenario. There's firearms, there's trains, there's somewhat advanced clockwork type technology. Uh, otherwise, there is magic mostly controlled by the elves, although there are other practitioners and cults and groups across the world. Um, we come to the party... Uh, in a tavern, or actually more of a, um, what's it called? A inn, known as the Trembling Rabbit, in the city of Falseport. Uh, if everybody could introduce their character and what they look like, and I'll sort of describe the room. Well, it's introduce yourselves as well. All right. Hey, I'm Risky, and I am playing Lentil Godfrey. I am a forest gnome cleric uh, with the domain of cooking. And so I'm real short. I got a nice little jacket on and a vest and shorts and a weird little cap on my head. <laughs> Oh, and uh, some rose-colored shades, because he's cool. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am Relevant. I am playing Juniper Hollow, a half-elf shadow monk. Um, She has... Did I say purple hair, Mark? Uh, did I, I think so, you? yeah. I think she has purple hair. I don't know. I just made it up <laughs> as I was typing. Um. She like she's kind of like dark purple. Yeah, dark purple hair. She's kind of like a grungy punk monk ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> One of them punk monks. Yeah. yeah. Classic punk monk. Oh yeah. That's all. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mark. I am now playing a Wanty warlock named Simon Salazar. I think maybe all of my characters are going to have S names from now on. We'll see. Um, he sounds like Jay does today because Jay's a little bit sick. And so he's like a deviated septum. You'll see when he when he arrives. Are you going to uh, talk like that? Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. 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 I don't really remember what it looks like he's wearing. Oh, he's he's like a... So Awansi's like a snake. 
kind of person. So he's got like he's pure blood, so he's more human humanoid than anything. But he's got some like blue scales and just wearing regular like a jacket, and he's got potions and whatnot. It's pretty fun. Warlock. I think I said that. Jay. I'm J- I'm Jay. As uh, Mark said, not feeling great today, but I'm here. <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, I'm playing Victor McCoy. He's a gunslinger. Uh, he's kind of inspirationally like Red Dead Redemption-y. Uh, he's going to be very Southern, kind of Kentuckian a little bit. And as I said at the end of the Origins campaign, he's going to be sketchier than Erdry. So good luck, everyone. Okay. Before I go too far, I do want to give a shout out to our patrons. Uh, Scotty does an O, LL Cole J, Jess S, Skate P, Mark E. Mark, Special K, Christian Haydenson, Nathan R, and Every Jared Begins with K. Uh, thank you guys for your support. We hope you're enjoying the podcast and, uh, give us a, drop us a line. Let us know what you're thinking, uh, especially about this new campaign. Cause I'm really excited about it. So I'd love to be shot down about how awful it is. That'd be the best. No. <laughs> so, um, you guys are in, like I said, the trembling rabbit. Um, this is in the city of Falseport. Uh, for the listeners and as a reminder for the party, Falseport is uh, a city that is probably 20, 30 miles away from the coastline, uh, the west coast of the country of Thrasis. However, on a world scale map, when you draw a city symbol, it looks pretty close to the, to the, uh, the coast. And so it has been many many times approached by fishermen and other things to only to find out that it's nowhere near the coast when they arrive um they therefore named it the city of false port uh in order to ward off unwanted visitors who were looking for mariners and ships and uh fishing but naming it false port only further drove more people there because you never name a non-port city port anything right uh Within this inn slash tavern, you guys are probably all sort of sitting separate. You all have different reasons to be here. Some of you are going north. Some of you are exploring the world. Some of you are just hiding out. Others are laying low. But you all happen to be here at this particular moment. Um, what would you each be drinking? I'm going to presume you've each gotten a drink already. I'm going to be trying one of their pumpkin ales. Pumpkin ales. Uh, they don't have any pumpkin ales. Oh. They do have a squash ale. I'll try it. Is not pumpkin a squash? Uh, they call it a squash ale. <laughs> uh, uh, it's mediocre. Yeah. I think Simon would be drinking like some kind yeah. of Vodka PBR. soda. <laughs> <laughs> Not PBR, like a vodka soda of some kind. The vodka soda. Some kind of mixed um, drink. So the, the bartender, what did you actually ask for? Did you ask for a vodka soda? Yeah. Um the bartender was like, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I can uh I can do that. And then you saw him take a cup of like water and Add a few drops of soap, shake it up a whole bunch so that it had lots of bubbles in it, and then pour that in with equal parts of vodka, and then just squeeze an orange into it, and then he handed that to you. Um, it, it tastes strongly of alcohol, but you're definitely getting a little bit of that soapy taste as well. It is bubbly, though. Sweet. <laughs> I think uh, Victor would be probably drinking some sort of whiskey while also specifying that it can't be gut rot. (laughs) Uh, They gave you a a whiskey. It was unmarked, but uh, it's not gut rot. It's also not good. It's just in a large, deep brown bottle 
that has definitely been refilled from something that doesn't fill very easily. So the bottle's sticky and there's like fingerprints all over the outside of it from where they've grabbed this bottle before. It just, it's not an appetizing thing to look at, but the alcohol itself is clean just due to it, the property of how strong the proof is. And Juniper? Uh... Whatever their best-selling beer is. Their best-selling beer. Um, Their best-selling beer is called uh, The Rabbit's Foot. Sure. It's the Trembling Rabbit's specialty. Um, They're really proud of it, but most people don't like it. However, it is half the cost of any other beer there, so they sell a lot of it. All right. They always price it at half whatever the next cheapest beer they own is. That's the the rabbit's foot guarantee. They uh, they like to say, "It'll cost you half the worst thing you ever had." And uh, yeah, that's their that's their motto. So um, as you guys are sitting there, you're each sort of drinking. It's been it's chilly out. We're talking like it's 35, 37 degrees. It's there's a little bit of snow on the ground from the last snowfall. And uh, you can tell you're towards the the northern end of the continent, right? Um, as you guys are just sitting there, uh, another person enters. It's a tall elf looking uh, person. With deep purple skin, long hair, and just sort of balanced movements. Although the eyes uh, are a little wild, just sort of darting around, maybe a little bit nervous. And he begins whispering with the bartender uh, somewhat furiously. How friendly does Victor look? Not. Oh. <laughs> Dang it. Um, as he's whispering and stuff, you see a large bag of money come out uh, of a pouch. And the elf slams it on the counter and slides it to the barkeep. And you see the barkeep throwing his arms up and whispering back and pushing the money back at the elf. The elf sort of huffs and looks back at uh, each person in the bar. And uh, let's see. Let's see here. Four. Uh, Approaches Juniper and sits down. The elf says, "Uh, I uh, see... A fellow elf here. You don't uh, look like you run with the law too much, do do you? Why you sound so shifty? It's, uh, I'm just uh, exhausted and nervous. I've been uh, trying to lay low. I've I have a rather uh, big job ahead of me, and I could use a a hand. Um, kind of job. I need to. I need to deliver uh, a device to the south. It's imperative that it gets there. Can I... Does he seem like... At least like... Semi-trustworthy? Yeah, he doesn't seem like he's... Particularly lying. But he definitely seems... Not nervous. um, Maybe alert concerned kind of drugs you on bro <laughs> yeah and he's, he do you say that yeah he, he goes oh um uh anything that'll keep me awake i uh, i've i haven't slept in um uh two weeks i think um and i'm i'm de- i um uh, definitely having a hard time uh keeping going, which is why I've decided to to ask for help. 
Um, so, uh, w- uh, and he looks around and he goes, are you, are you interested? You going to pay me? Yes. Oh, for sure. Um, and then he sort of stands up in, uh, a little bit of a sudden movement and you can see the sweat sort of rolling down his, uh, arms. He's like soaked with it, even though he just came in from the outside cold. And he shouts to the room and he says, Any, anyone, anyone who wants to make a thousand gold, I can, I can pay. I, I need this device delivered. So I'm like trying I, to I, shush him. <laughs> he's like, no, no, you, I, it, it needs to be a team. I, I will pay a thousand gold a person. To, to take this the this device south to can to I smack the... him to get him to like shut up? Yeah, you can. And like sit down. Go for it. Okay. Roll me just straight athletics. Oh, athletics. Yeah. Five. Five. You sort of hit him, and he he steps down from the chair that he's been standing on, and he goes. It, it's important that this happens quickly. Okay, but you don't need to be shouting it to everyone. Well, Some people are here trying to lay low, and you're not helping. I need. The, I. I have to. This has to be done quickly. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? You. You hear uh-huh. him make this announcement, and then the elf uh, slaps him, and he steps back down, and is now sort of whispering to her. Victor uh, stands up and goes over and sits with him, but he doesn't actually say anything. Uh, Lentil's going to kind of push his gross beer back at the bartender <laughs> and ask him for something better and to charge it on the guy that was yelling. And I'm <laughs> going to walk over to him. Okay. I'm going pro- to produce a flame in my hand and then just stare as I walk slowly over to where now everyone's gathering for some reason. <laughs> and he looks and he goes, yes, yes, this, this, th- there's a chance that, he, that you could do it. I, and he pulls out a chest. I fucking hate you right now, guy. The chest is only about maybe... Mm, a foot by six inches, right? And then as he uh, pulls on the sides of the chest, it grows to two feet, then three feet. At three feet, it seems to lock, and he opens the chest up. Inside of it is a uh, obscene amount of gold. And he shows it to you. He throws each of you a gold piece out of the chest. And then he shoves the two sides back together until the chest itself is as flat as a sheet of paper and is basically an 11 by 7 sheet of paper, which he then folds and then folds again so that it's only like the size of the palm of his hand. He sets that on the table and he says, this chest will open the moment the device makes contact with the the uh, what 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 do you call it the 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 gate the gates in, in the mountains in the south the moment it makes contact the device makes contact this will open whether i get the device there or you do I, and that's that's the thing i'm going to give you one of them and i'm going to take the other one and we need we need one of us needs to get it there and then you get your gold and and i complete my mission uh how far south are we going he goes um i am not that familiar with uh the region itself i know it must be quite a distance uh probably at least Four or five hundred miles. Hmm. What is this device? What what device are we 
take it down there. This that this is a weird this is a weird thing to, to shout in here, I can tell you that. And he uh pulls a device out. And the device looks like a sort of mm, a simple wooden board that has like a clock looking thing on the front. It has no no markings, but it does have four hands that are all slowly rotating around the face of this thing. This looks like a bomb, friend. Uh <laughs> No, no, no. It's it's not a bomb. It it merely it merely would um help to keep the gate healthy. Is the gate currently unhealthy? I'm from around there and I haven't heard anything about unhealthy gates and bombs. <laughs> and he goes, "You there is much you don't know." But I can't. I cannot share all of it. It would just put you in more danger. That is part of why I need you to go rather than me. I know enough that I likely will never get close enough to deliver it. You know, I'm kind of pissed at you right now. Why is that? Because now I've got all these goddamn strangers crowding my fucking table. He, he says, I apologize, but it is more important to me that this mission happens successfully. Okay, your well, your is mission isn't that important to me. How, how can I make it important to you? Well, it would have been if you didn't just start shouting at the goddamn rooftops. <laughs> um, at about this moment... You see that the a bartender brings over a, another drink for a uh, lentil. Um, it's a stout. A very, very, very chocolatey stout. Hmm. And, How good is it? Um, it's not great. It's better than your other drink, but it's still a stout. So, you know. Yeah. Hey, little friend, maybe you should try a uh, vodka soda. It's pretty good. It'll clear, clean out your mouth. Uh Clear your palate. You look like a guy who knows how about all about cooking. I can tell you that. The bartender turns to the four of you and says, "Hey, you know, you folks don't need to get mixed up with the dark elf. They're uh, well, you know. Are you being? Are you, is this a race racism right now? And he goes, no, 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 no. Uh, you know, this is just law abiding." Now, you folks may not have seen many Dark Elves in your time. They're very rare anymore, um, as the great Lord Thoris outlawed their existence. So, you know, you see a Dark Elf, you're talking to an outlaw from the get-go. They're not supposed to be here. Now, Mr. Uh, Elf, sir, I'm going to have to ask you to leave and stop bugging my patrons. Um... I have already alerted the guards to your presence. So, and he immediately jumps up and says, I need to go. I cannot be captured by the guards. And he leaves the chest and the device. And he says, my only hope is that you can deliver this. I have to try and get it there myself. But please, please take this south. And he bolts. And the bartender goes, don't worry about him. I'll take that stuff right off your hands. And he reaches out for no, the no, device no, in fine. the chest. You can leave it. Don't touch my fucking table. This was here. This was here before. That I don't, He doesn't know anything about this. This is <laughs> ours. Uh, he should hear a very daunting gun thing going click, click, click. Like someone <laughs> pulling back a hammer to a gun. <laughs> He throws his hands back and he goes, folks, 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 I'm not trying to steal from you. Those guards are going to be here any minute. And let me tell you, you don't want to be known as, you know, those who aided a dark elf. That's a What dark elf? I didn't see a dark elf. He goes, well, as a half-breed, you probably have some sort of... Uh, let's say, affinity for the other elves. But let me tell you, you're not doing yourself or any elves favors by 
aiding or abetting a dark elf. What did you call me? A half breed, you know, because you're you're not fully elven. I don't suspect. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pick the stuff up, stuff up off the table and be like, well, I guess I'll just take my business elsewhere. And, start and leaving. he says, well, maybe you be half Doc Elf then, huh? I'm sorry, but I don't associate with racists. <laughs> he says, well, I don't associate with Doc Elves. And he ushers you out and he goes, now, the rest of you fine gentlemen seem like you could do uh, with a free mug on me. So how about you sit down and relax, and we'll explain to the gods how that dark elf and his happy cousin were here plotting. Did she have the money and the device with her? Yeah, yep. she grabbed it. And oh, I just, I just get up and follow her then. I'm just going to hand him his nasty stout back. <laughs> like, yeah, you get, I, I don't want any of your drinks. <laughs> Hey, where okay. are you guys going? I'll meet you somewhere. I would love to have another drink. <laughs> uh, I want to see that cool little chest trick again. Okay. I'm going to leave too. So you guys get outside, and uh, where are you going, Juniper? You've got these three following you now. Um, are there any other like taverns or it's not that big of a town? Not that big. There is a unofficial bar at the uh rail yard, but it's it's pretty poor. It's it's shitty. It's basically just a bunch of hobos with uh homemade booze. All right. Nice. I'm gonna start heading that way. Okay. <laughs> So you guys are heading to the rail yard, and uh, after a few minutes of walking, you do see guards heading the other direction towards where you came from. Um, Four of them. And then there's a larger-looking guard with a sort of uh, golden armor on. Not one that you're familiar with. Uh, It seems like they're probably some sort of specialist and uh, they're headed back towards where you had come from. They don't spare you a glance, none of you. Where are we going, lady? Where are you taking us? Shut up. <laughs> you said you wanted another drink, right? Y'all want some drinks? We're going to go get some toilet drinks. Down by the tracks? This is like the bad part of town. The toilet. They're not actual to- Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, actually. Are I'm you from here? That. Is this where you're from? How do you know about no. this place? No. This isn't where I'm from. You're, you're a little late on the dark elf. A little late on the information and the details here. Everything right now is need to know. I don't know you guys, so you don't need to know anything other than what we all already know from that fucking screaming ass bitch elf. Okay, well, since <laughs> you took all of the gold, can I at least have my gold? It's not going to open. Until we do the task. How do he you gave know? us a go- one gold a piece. Didn't he throw us some gold? <sighs> Didn't he say it wouldn't open until we did the thing? Yeah, but he's just going to take his word for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I see it? You want to see the chest? Yeah. Okay, hold it out. How tall is he? Is how tall are you? Um, I'm pretty damn short. <laughs> is he he's shorter than me, right? Yeah, he's like three foot five. Okay, well, I'm gonna like hold it above his head, but in he front of his eyes. He is to you as normal people are to you. <laughs> oh, stop it! <laughs> oh, stop it! <laughs> and be like, there, you see it? Wow, that's very very mature. Uh. May I hold it, please? Yeah, it looks Why? broken. We should take a look at it. I want to try to open it. Fine. Here. Open it. God. You're real mouthy. Uh, I'm going to try to open it. Okay. Um, the paper is, feels like it's just a sheet of paper about, uh, we'll say, 
like two by three right now. Like there's no way to open it. it just feels like a piece of paper right now. But you can I see some rooms flashing up on it, but it doesn't even feel like it's folded anymore. It feels like it's it's a single sheet. Oh. It'd be like unfolding a sticker. Well, I'm going to try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, as you sort of tear at it and peel and pull, it just doesn't seem like it's uh, coming at all. It's just like you manage to pull and the best you can do is just get a little bit of a paper tear on it. Hmm. This doesn't seem like it's a chest. Did he do a magic trick on us? Like, does this even a chest? Low man. I I don't know. Maybe it was just an illusion, and he just had a few actual gold pieces that he threw at us, and it's not an actual real chest. Yeah, I don't want to go down to the gates for nothing, and I don't even know that guy. I don't what know I that guy either. Would I be familiar with this type of thing? Um, yeah, I would say both Juniper and you in your previous experience would have come across this sort of, uh, we'll say contract magic is essentially what it is. Basically, a reward that is contingent upon a specific uh, task being uh, happening. Oh, yeah, I would totally know about that. Yeah, so it's a thing. It's a little a bit of an unusual one. It doesn't have the the same markings on it, the same types of runes that you're familiar with, but it definitely reacted the way that you would anticipate it reacting, and it's not an out-there thing to either of you, although it is pretty rare. Both of you have experience with the criminal underworld in a way where you would have seen this in situations where neither party really trusts each other. Okay, well, well I'm just gonna... Just like paper. Yeah, this seems like not... This seems real sketch and shady, and I'm not sure about this situation, so... It's I'll, to protect I'll, both parties, basically. All right, boys, here's the thing. You're very dumb, and that's okay. But if you want the money in there, you gotta see the contract through. It's just the way it works. Did you call that lady a boy? She's obviously much smarter than you. She's, so no. Oh, she's one of the boys. I get it. I get it. Oh, fuck. You're an idiot, dude. <laughs> I was obviously referring to you two because I said the word stupid. <laughs> uh, I, that, 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 that's awfully not very, rude. Yeah, this, these are not nice people. I don't know. I don't know if I want to hang out with these people. Well, uh, as you guys are walking along, following Juniper to this hobo place you see a guard sort of running your way from behind you rushing along just a single solitary guard and he is shouting uh hey hold up you folks hold i said halt i'll stop hey. simon stops i'm gonna stop too lentil stops nope I'm just going to keep walking. Yep. <laughs> Juniper and Victor <laughs> just say it like, fuck off. And the they party just keep splits. <laughs> the, uh, the guard quickly catches up to uh, Lentil and Simon and says, uh, there's word of a dark elf and a she dark elf around. Uh, have you seen? Have you seen these two? Uh, characters? What do they look like? What's a she-dark elf? It'd be like, a, uh, they, they got dark, evil skin, purple as the night, and they're evil, and they're looking to overthrow all of the, the governments, is what I'm told. I don't think I've seen anyone that's evil. A <laughs> few assholes, though. Mmm. Mmm. Uh, are you both sure? Yeah. I mean, the bartender there's been serving some real evil beers. There, It's just, it's wrong what he serves to people. 
he looks at you, he looks at Simon, and he says, And you, good sir? Oh, me? I don't know. It's, uh, can you describe him again? <laughs> he says, I don't have time for this. What about those two? Are your companions? Oh, I don't know that. Oh, those are assholes. Perfect. And he goes rushing up after them uh, at a full sprint. Are you guys hurrying, or are you just sort of still casually walking? Casually walking? I don't give a fuck about this Yeah, guy. I'm not trying to, like, run from him. I'm just, you know. <laughs> as as he gonna... catches up, he says, I said halt! Now, under penalty of arrest, I need uh, to ask you some questions. Go on, then. Now, I'm looking for a dark elf and his she-elf bitch. And he he looks at the two of you and he says, Now, with that dark purple hair there, is that uh, your heritage by chance? Haven't you ever heard of hair dye? And he, uh, his eyes narrow and he goes, I have not heard of the death of hair. This is new to me. Oh my god. You're an idiot. It changes your hair color. Yes, I imagine dead hair would be different. But I've seen dead people before, and it doesn't turn purple normally. You're an idiot. (laughs) He looks at Victor and he goes, Sir, as the... um, Clearly more reasonable of the two of you. Can you tell me if this woman is uh, in cahoots with a vile dark elf scum? I ain't gonna lie. That's a large word, and I don't really like it that much. But one thing I can tell you for sure is, ain't no dark elf been around here. He says, yeah, they're outlawed? If you didn't know. He goes, I'd watch your mouth, missy. I might throw you in the brig just for killing hair while they're talking i want to cast this guy self on myself to make it myself look like someone like he would know or somebody like him since he's not looking i can cast this guy self at will okay so who are you trying to look like i want to look like a guard i don't want to be his twin but somebody just like somebody a generic who would be, yeah human guard <laughs> yeah okay yeah you you can uh do that you're still gonna have to roll for deception but okay. you can definitely look that way and you'll have advantage on the check yeah i see him change <laughs> yeah i just turn uh, and go Shh. have you been a guard this whole time be quiet i'm gonna try something the guard turns around and he says ah you two you two get over here i may need help from a citizen in arresting this woman this she seems guy, likely to resist. I don't think he's a citizen of here, but I think that we saw the there's a dark elf over that way. We, we just saw him. We're, we're tracing up, tracking up, so you should come with us. Pull me deception <laughs> with advantage, obviously. Ooh, a nat 20 or... Jesus. 22. <laughs> okay. And he goes, well, fellow god, I don't... Hmm. You know, there's only six of us here. It's odd I don't recognize you, but... Are you are you here on the exchange program? Oh, I, we met earlier. I, my name's Craig. You don't remember me? That's a little rude. Oh, no, I, I def- definitely remember you, Craig. I thought it's... we were getting close, but I, you don't even remember seeing me, so... Uh, it's it's simple. I just... I I had forgotten. Um, that's all this business of the dark elf in town is the most exciting thing that's happened in a while. Uh, can Craig? Um, where where did you see him headed to? Uh, they were headed outside of the town, like by that rabbit, the 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 trembling rabbit, headed the by other the tri- way. Uh, that bartender tricked us. Yeah, you just well, missed him. Uh, luckily, the uh. The Golden Knights suspected as much and Maybe took that off the other direction from the get-go. Is in cahoots. Yes, I think he probably is. Okay. Along with you, a distraction. What? And he turns to Simon and he says, "Come now, let's arrest this woman." 
And uh, he draws a sword and approaches you, Juniper. I'm just trying to go back to my camp. And he says, get on your knees, put your arms behind your back. You are under arrest. No. You will be put to death for treason. For treason? Yes, that's that's what I said. For gallivanting with dark elves. Be you dark elf or not, the penalty is the same. You don't have any proof. This is, uh, I have you all the proof I need. You to remember your own... Yeah, like... you didn't even remember your own friend. And your says, new... Craig here? Craig and I go way back as far as... You didn't as you remember know. him. Says, Craig, back me up on this. Yeah, it's pretty common. You can only remember four people's names, and then I'm the uh, the fifth person, so I just, like, he must have met somebody else and then pushed me right out. That's, it makes perfect sense to me. He points the sword at Juniper, and he says, Now, on your knees, wench! I'm not a wench, and I'm not getting on my knees for any man. <laughs> He's like, Well, then! Well, boys, back up. You're about to see a god take down a she-elf. Uh, roll initiative, Juniper. Ten. You guys tied. <laughs> What's your dex mod? My dex mod is plus three. Okay, you're going to get to go first. Oh my gosh. Are we in combat? No, not unless you want to be. He's not I... about the rest of you. <clears throat> I just had a spell that I could help her with. I didn't know if I'd have to roll for that. Uh, no, you can do it. It would put you into combat. Okay. I'm also going to be in combat. Okay. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> My initiative when it gets there is going to be 13, but I'm guessing they're going to go first. It's the two of them. Ooh, that's not good. Well, technically, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, Juniper is going to get to go first, and then you guys are going to get to do your stuff as part of a surprise round. Uh, yeah, I rolled a nine. Nine? Okay. Juniper, what you doing? Um... Well, I'm going to hit him. <laughs> and then um so roll an attack where'd it go I'm gonna hit him and then I'm gonna um use a bonus action and spend one key point to make two more unarmed attacks on him okay Uh, 20, non-natural. 20 hits. <coughs> uh, for five damage. Okay. Then you use a key point, make two more attacks. Yep. Damn. Uh, the next one's a nine. <laughs> nine misses. I don't know what that was. Um, and then I got a 15. A 15. Okay. 15 hits. Okay. So. For four damage. Okay. You uh, slam a fist into his face. You swing a spinning back elbow around, um, but it whiffs past his nose. As your elbow passes his nose, you just extend the arm all the way and turn it into a spinning back fist, and it slams into the side of his ear. Um, and he lets out like a yelp. Ah! Uh, and is like, boys, I'm going to need backup on this one. And uh, proceeds to pull out a whistle to blow for more guards. Um, however, it is going to be Victor and Lentil's surprise round now. Hmm. Who's going first? Uh, 13, Victor. Okay. 
I'm going to give him the old one-two shot to the face. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be a 17 to hit. 17 to hit. That'll hit. And it's going to be 12 damage. <sighs> okay. And that's going to be my turn. 12 is solid, though. <laughs> Uh, and then Lentil, what are you doing? Um, I was going to do something, but I might change that now. Eh, I'll just attack. Okay. Uh, he needs to make a deck save. Get a nine. That's not enough. What happens? Uh, he's going to get, I think, fire damage. Oh, radiant damage. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Oh, yeah. You're a priest. Oh, Claire. And eight. Eight? Yeah, on a D8. Cool. That's never happened. Oh, man. In the history of D&D. <laughs> He looks really <laughs> bad. <laughs> he, he, he like doubles down. He got punched, then a spinning back fist, shot in the back, and then lit on holy fire. <laughs> and he's just like on his knees and he's like <sighs> He's trying to blow the whistle, but you can see the blood coming out of the hole in the his back. Can As I take the whistle from him? Uh, he's going to get his turn first. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but he, he, his bonus action is trying to blow the whistle. Um, mm -hmm. His lung is punctured from the gunshot and is just spitting blood out his back as he tries to do that. And he desperately lunges forward with his sword at Juniper and says, uh, Die, bitch! And, uh, oh, he rolls pretty good. That's a 23. Whoa. Damn. Oh, but I can, um, spend a keep. Can I dodge? Uh, I think you have to dodge as part uh, of your turn. Oh, yeah, I do. Never mind. Okay. What do you. That's only. <sighs> he rolled the opposite on his uh, D8. Um, that is only three damage. With his flimsy sword thrust. You didn't tell me what a what his thing was to hit me. 23 or 23? 23? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he hit you. <ya. laughs> well, he didn't. <laughs> he's he way did. higher than that. <laughs> Say no urgery shit anymore. You guys are getting hit by 23s. Yeah. Damn it. Why can't we... shield as a reaction? <laughs> yeah. Let's just, we could just be friends. Why are we fighting you guys? Let's not, we don't need to kill, kill the guards. I didn't want to kill him. He was being a dick. It is Victor's turn. I'm going to shoot him again. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be, definitely is going to hit. Uh, 22 to hit. Okay. You execute him. How right. do you execute this guy on his knees, heaving wow. blood out of his chest, who's like trying to blow on a whistle, but anytime he gets air pressure enough to do that, his lungs instead just collapse. Oh man, what's something awful I could do? <laughs> I'm going to walk up to him and I'm going to say... Uh, <clears throat> Fortunately for you, this will be the last time, so you won't take this information far. But when you see two squirrels fucking, you're going to get your eyes scratched. And I blast him in the head. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes down. Um, I figured you were going to say something like way dumber, like, you just yeed your last haul. <laughs> <laughs> do, all the, he... do all these gunshots bring people to us? So these are clockwork guns more than they are sort of typical guns they're significantly quieter at least for the gun that he's using right now there will be louder ones later um for now no it doesn't bring any okay. particular attention no louder than the screams of a guard and the sound <laughs> of metal slamming into metal and all that other stuff 
dog just ripped ass. (laughs) (laughs) And as the guard dies on the ground, the four of you surrounding the body, we will end the first episode of the Dicarn campaign. (laughs) And uh, hope you guys enjoyed. We'll come back and uh, find out how the party is going to move forward now that they've committed murder together. (laughs) Thank you for listening, and goodbye.